everybody. How you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson, and welcome. I am down here in the Villages, Florida, which is about the middle of Florida. So I am going to give you a follow-up update to Hurricane Lee. And just a reminder, I only do these things kind of if it deals with the Villages, Central Florida, or Florida, and I really don't venture outside of that. Also, I keep this very, very simple. Uh, I used to be a, I guess I still am a storm chaser. I used to guide people in the Midwest chasing tornadoes. And now that I've kind of come out here and retired in Florida, I just do this as kind of a follow-on thing to, I don't know, kind of let people know about stuff in our area of the villages. So with that said, please subscribe and like. Make sure if you do subscribe, you hit that upper bell so you get notified of everything. So Let's just jump right into this. And first of all, a lot of people don't even know that there's actually a hurricane season. So let's take a look at a chart from NOAA. And as you can see right here, the season basically kind of centers around August to November or so. But right now, we are right in the middle of hurricane season. So let's take a look at Lee and see exactly what's happening with Lee. This is a satellite image, and basically you can tell right here in just about the middle and orange is Lee and the projected direction that it's going to go. Now, I'm going to talk in a few seconds about what bangs these hurricanes all over the place. But Margo is kind of like right there in the middle, and if you look down in the bottom right, there coming off of Africa are a few more storms, and we'll briefly cover those and where although this is way in the distance where we think they're going to go, whether they're heading towards Florida or not. This is what's called an ensemble or spaghetti pattern or a bunch of other nicknames for it. But basically what it is, is there's a bunch of major models that are created uh, around the world, basically. And this kind of clumps those all together. Now, when I go through this real quick, you'll see kind of like spider webs going all over the place. And although there's only about five models or four models in this, they, they each kind of put in different scenarios. Like what if this happened? What if this happened? And that's what creates the, the spaghetti pattern. So here we go. Taking a look at this real quick. As you can see, it's pretty. they're all pretty much in agreement. There's one that strays out every once in a while. But then just around Wednesday... This storm starts to break right, and we'll talk about that in a second, what actually causes that or has caused that, and starts heading north. And as we venture out towards the weekend, you can see there's a bunch of different patterns, and it actually gets pretty spread out. And each one of those little hairs that's sticking out there or pieces of spaghetti actually is... They tweak their own models just a little little differently. But the, the black one is the mean of all the models, and the other ones are the four other models that are included in this. Now, this is giving you a general idea of timing, but NOAA also puts out a what I call the cone of confusion. They call it the cone of uncertainty or the cone, mo the cone chart. And let's take a look at that real quick. It's really important that when you look at this, and you're going to see a lot, a lot of times the meteorologists on the news stations and stuff use this. The important part of this, and I'm going to read a note right off, right off of this from Noah. The cone contains the probable path of storm center, but does not show the size of the storm. Hazardous conditions can occur outside the cone and almost always do. As you can see, this is 11 a.m., starts at 11 a.m. on Monday. Just right around Wednesday or so, it really starts bending towards the north. Now, you're going to see kind of a spotted, dotted area. That is an area that's kind of a guesstimate, and that's designed around, let's, how can I put this, how many mistakes the predictions NOAA has made over the last, I think it's five years or so. So it gives an average of where that center of the hurricane. So obviously a much larger hurricane, if it ventured off to the sides, is going to cover a lot more area. But this is kind of where they're predicting this to be. And you'll see down there that it starts out as an M. 
So you're actually talking category three or above. And as you move north, it is kind of gets down into the category two. And you'll see in a second that this really gets blasted apart as it moves up to the northeastern states. Those are the kind of important things to re remember there when looking at this and that the actual effects of the hurricane can branch outside of this cone. It's not where it's contained to. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump out and kind of take a look at the North Atlantic as a, as a whole. Moving back a little bit and kind of taking a look at the whole Atlantic, you can see there's a bunch of stuff going on out there. And right there you can see Lee. And in this diagram, you can see that it's a, a, a category three. And then just as it moves up, probably like Tuesday or so, it'll bump up to a category four. As it makes the turn, it turns to a category three and it starts accelerating somewhat and turns into a category two and then eventually into a one as it goes up north. Margo is kind of centered out there and as it's referred to a fish storm, uh, feeding the fish out there, I guess. But if you look down on the bottom right, you can start to see some of the other storms or so that are brewing out there, so to speak. Now, 97L, Invest 97, Invest means investigative area or investigation. And that's lab they're labeled in the 90s, 90, I think, through 99. And so the next one down to the bottom right of that, that says, so that 97 says 10% chance of formation to be a named storm. That the next named storm, I believe, let's see, Margo Nigel, I believe it is, which very possibly could be the storm you see that X all the way down in the bottom right. In other words, it hasn't gained, formed up enough to be named uh, in going into a depression and then into a storm and then into a hurricane is basically what we're talking. And it probably is going to get named. You'll see in the next uh, GFS model, which is a long reaching model, we're going to check out exactly what causes these hurricanes to kind of bump around out there. I know this is a little more than just saying, hey, Lee's not going to show up at our doorstep, as I think you can already tell. But you may want to just kind of understand why a little bit and what in the world is going up there and why they get bumped around a lot. And you'll see why Lee's moving around a little bit. So let's let's go ahead and go check into that chart. Here we go. This is going to be just about the last chart that we go through. And I think you'll see how things get bumped around here. Now, there are things called troughs and ridges out there in, in that big pinball machine of, of our Earth. And a trough is pretty much just... This atmosphere bends down like this around a low, and then there's a ridge where it goes up and goes the other way. And that's what kind of moves these hurricanes around. Now, you may think of hurricanes as big, bad things moving all over the place. But really, if you kind of liken it to a pinball machine, say, and that hurricane is that, that little pinball running around there, you have these bumpers and the flippers out there. And basically, those bumpers and flippers out in the atmosphere are kind of bumping this pinball around. And if you don't hit that, that little bumper or trough at the exact time as what the forecast, say, seven days ago was, it's going to react different. It's going to go shoot off into a different area. And that's what we're going to take a look at on this chart, exactly how Hurricane Lee was affected by these troughs. And... It's really hard, if you listen to these forecasts from seven days ago, it's really hard to figure out exactly where they're going to get together and interact with each other. But I think you'll see on here really quick how this happens. So that's Lee, that little black dot right down there. It's pretty intense right now. And like I said, just about um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this thing starts to make its round up north. And if we look just back it up right here, you can look just above Lee, there is a trough up there. Now, it originally had forecast, if you go back quite a few days, for these two to interact a little more, and Lee just kind of just misses this, although it's influenced right now by it, it just misses, kind of misses the big part of it, and therefore is not going to get pushed 
way out to sea right away and is more so going to head up, as we saw, into the New England area. But remember, it's also weakening. And just as it starts to approach up there, just above it, up above it again is another trough. And what's going to happen is that trough's going to come in. And as we go across, it's going to hit it and just kind of blow it apart is really what happens. That's about it for Lee. And definitely try to remember that I am not a professional weather forecaster. You definitely want to refer to your governmental um, facilities to kind of get your, your main weather from and all your emergency broadcasting. Also, I will, there's some other storms right behind this. You may have seen that. They kind of go the same way as Lee. If anything changes with those, I will jump on here and let you know. But it looks like right now, uh, as of September 11th, we got some pretty nice weather. Our typical afternoon storms coming along, but uh, it's probably low 90s today, but it's eventually in a, in a week or so, it's gonna start dropping off in the mid 80s. It's gonna get really nice down here in Florida. Part of the reason we moved down here to the villages. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Please make sure you subscribe and like. And I will get back in touch with you the next time there's a storm rolling here. But anyway, I will either see you down here in the villages or see you back on YouTube. Thanks a lot for joining me. Have a wonderful day. I guess you're going to have a wonderful rest of the week, too.